Ash is going to cast out now. He's brought the Cisco on the Chod. Oh, mate, that's close, isn't it? Step over your rod. Look at that, look. Right next to the tree. Oh, perfect. Lovely, mate. It is 20 past 8 in the morning. I don't know if you can see out there, but it's not a bloody jacuzzi. The water of all these fry, these little roach fry. Just everywhere. They're going mental. I still haven't had anything on my rods. I had a double bleep last night on my left hand rod. It did, did. Oh no, that's right. Looked at it. Nothing. So. But the tides have turned. Last time when we came here, I had a tench on the cell. And Ash has now had a tench on the coconut cream. <laughs> what you got to say for yourself? Um, people keep saying when they come here that I haven't had a carp. Oh. They've had other stuff than carp. I think we're getting the same way, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> you know? But t tench feed very similar to carp, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know? And you can't be that far away from the mine. You know, it's still time, still bite time, isn't it? it certainly is, mate. You know, so. I've just been lying in my bed all morning thinking, I've never been this messy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Jipbo sight. It's, yeah. like, it's like my bivvy. <laughs> I was kept thinking, I hope no one comes round because I've got a great place in. <laughs> oh, another beautiful day. Starting to warm up. <clears throat> I'm not as fred as I thought I'd be, mate. You know what I normally get like? It's because the weather's nice, isn't it? Yeah, and I get moody, don't I? And throw little tantrums. And I've done an extra day of views as well. But I'm not annoyed actually because it's such a massive water and it's not known it's not known as like everyone catches, is it? The of the four people I spoke to before you got here. One of them said he's been here six times, he still ain't had a carp. One of them said he's been here nine times, still ain't had a carp. Mark, who was to the right, who's same peg as me, he said uh, he went for a whole year without having a carp. Out of here, do you know what I mean? One day things will just fall into place, mate, and we'll get some big lamps on the side. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want, isn't it? Yeah, mate. All right, sign enough. So, it's a Sunday morning, um, Ash has had a tench, which is good news, well, so good news, just sitting in between the two swims at the minute, because Ash has uh, had to go and use the uh, toilets, and he got receiver, so. sitting in the middle. He's just had a bleep on his left hand rod. But um there's a lot of fry down on his down by his rod tips like where his lines going in so it might be that. Had some resident mates actually all week. Some ducks up there. And uh it's quite funny I made that spot mix up this little particle and that and had some Chili hemp and that in there, and uh, I basically I ain't used it. Oh, I've used sort of like one sort of bucket load, 
still got another bucket load there, so I combined the two together, and then whatever I had, I had a little bit left over, only a little bit, and uh, I basically I just poured it down, down the side there where it says no fishing. The ducks loved it, they come along and they was munching on it yesterday. It's basically like pigeon food, all like bird seed and that. I forgot it had the chilli in it and, the, and they was loving it. But one minute they're munching on it, next minute they're in the water going, having a drink and that. And I was like, oh God, the poor gits. But they, they loved it, it's all gone now, so, you know what I mean? I suppose it's like us going to the curry house, isn't it, eh? Like a bit of spice every now and again. Mate, you had a, a bleep on your left hand rod. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's quarter to nine now. I still ain't had anything. But I'm not I'm not annoyed like normally. You see I throw my little tantrums and that. Especially if I've sent me two hours with nothing. But on this water I think if you ain't where the fish are, that's it, you know what I mean? They're not gonna move in. But um you know what I mean I've just I lucked out. The bloke who was there before, he had them two lovely fish and then uh, Mark moved in and he had um, he had a run and lost it and he had uh, a pike as well on his carp gear but I've had nothing I mean I was spotting a lot out there yesterday and the bailiff come around and he says you know what I mean be careful when you're spotting because you might spook them out and, but oh, I can't get bait out there otherwise I mean, boil isn't that with a throwing stick, yeah, but that's it. Still a few hours to go yet. I say about three hours, I'm going to pack up at 12, it's Mother's Day. So I'm going to pop down and see my old dear. Which, uh, which you got to do, ain't you, on a Sunday, if you can. But next week's our first competition, and we'll be videoing that. Done really well with that last year. Come second out of oh, how many pairs of fish are about ten, about ten pairs, I think. We come second. I was fishing with a bloke called Stevie Lou, who's in the uh, the Air Corps team as well. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll do a bit better there than we have here. And you never know, we might do better than we did last year, which is good. Not boasting, but I did have both fish, a 25 and a 34. My first 30. And uh, my second or third 20, I think it was. Let's go and have a talk to Ash. What are you thinking, mate? I think I might just have a look back on the peg one again. Straight up, see what's going on. Yeah. See if there's any more movement there. Um, obviously, we've seen fish up there yesterday, then, not we? Yeah. Oh, this is one thing that we've been getting annoyed about that train. That one's not too bad, it's only two carriages, but all night, innit? It's been like, oh, <coughs> shut up. It's amazing, I like to get shotgun shots and how the fry react to the sound of the shotgun. <laughs> They just bounce, so they, they are sensitive to it, the fish. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, I think the bigger car don't have Look at that. A bit more used to it. Look at the water. That is going mental. Oh, <laughs> that's not wind, that's cry. It's a little pike trying to have a snaffle and the grebe. A little munch. Yeah, they keep running straight down here and straight into my fucking line. <laughs> You looking forward to the competition next week? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think if we can, we should really see if we can get down there this week and just have a little nose about, didn't you? Down Water Beach? Yeah. <coughs> Are we allowed on though? Just say we're doing a, a fart recce. <laughs> That's where we've done a fart before, isn't it? Mm. That's a forward arming refueling point with the Apaches. It's a disused airfield and they dug out the lake back in like. Um, 40s for to build the runway 
and it's been there ever since, so it's been, you know what I mean, it's a well-established lake. Done a fart there, didn't I? Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. Where the Apaches were, and we were rearming and refueling them, and a bit distracted when they weren't there. We were running over to the lake and that, <laughs> have a little look around. So, um, right, okay, signing off. So, it's only about what was it, 15 minutes after I uh, spoke to you last. But I've just seen my first signs of, of sort of like of carp uh, in my swim for the last couple of days. And what it was, was right up the back there, right up the back. Um, a big carp just come out of the water twice, big splashes. I thought it was a bird the first time, and I looked again, it went, what mental. Yeah, look at them little things over there, and birds fighting. Anyway. So uh, I just thought, right, get a choddy out again. So I brought my choddy in, which was sort of like in line. I told you about the green zone, the green line along that, from them green um, reeds there to the green reeds there. I called that the green line. My left hand rod's still on there, on the left hand side. But the right hand rod, I've now just launched it right up the back on the chod, brought it in, dipped it in a bit of plum. Um, because I got told to stay clear of the right hand side, very snaggy. And as well, obviously, we all know last night I lost my bloody spot in a tree, so I'm not doing about that. Now, <clears throat> these new rods I told you about, the uh, Starbakes mill specs, 13 footers. It's taken a bit of getting used to, to get used to them, because they are a lot thicker, um, a lot longer. And uh, they are three and a half pound test curve, except right, the tip action is amazing. It's just really soft. It's a really nice, uh, sensitive tip. Um, and like I say, just for me casting a chod, uh, what we've we got on there, a three ounce distance lead, I think it is. I just went, just literally, and straight out, it's just bang, straight out there. You know what I mean, no effort really required at all. Um, one thing I will say though is, you'll notice in the other videos I've got my rod I have the, the greys have got like a little line clip here but here what I've had to do is um, these things here are called solar solar line clips or rod clips or something like that and basically it just takes the line from here up to the clip clip it in the clip and then it goes down to the indicator which I think gives a bit of a better indication um, I mean, if you want, you can have them up here, and you can have your line up there and then straight down to them. Up to you, but um, I've always used a little line clip on the rods for better indication than that, because I have my eye of my, of my rod, obviously the other side of the bite alarm. My mate Stu, he has his eye right up against the front of the bite alarm, um, which I don't do. He says it's because it's, um, it stops the rod getting dragged in, but if you've got like... The butt, the butt rests that your rod can clip into. It's, I don't think that will affect you. And obviously, I've got my snag bars on as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I can't be that far away from the fish. I'm a bit closer to them now. <coughs> but yeah, what a lovely set of rods. Lovely. Glad I got them now. It cost me an arm and leg, but there we go. There's a few people either packing up now or turning up. I don't know which. What we're doing. Let me make the back look. Have a little chat. Um got a big <laughs> you probably not so I've got a big log just there in my swim. But what that's for is when I was spodding yesterday, I just built up my platform. So I've got like me you can either put another bucket on there and then your your spod bucket with all your mix and stuff in, just to get it at that height that you're not constantly bending down. Do you know what I mean? It, I mean, my forearm's killing my right arm. From uh, don't be don't be thinking dirty thoughts there, people. My right arm's killing from from uh, throwing sticks and and spotting and getting used to using my new rods and stuff like that. Um, because obviously over winter, you've seen how I've been fishing, ain't been spotting, very rarely using the throwing stick. And I must have put out about half a kilo. Three quarters of a kilo over the last three days of plum. It ain't the bait, it ain't the bait because, you know what I mean, 
as we've seen in the vid, it, it's caught. It's all doing well. But um, it's just location, I think. And I scared them yesterday. I pushed them all up the back when I was spotting. But I think they're all right. So yeah, so yeah, I mean if you can when you're spotting, get a platform or something or get a couple of buckets and put them up different levels so it's closer to you so you're not bending down and what have you. I think that's um it helps me out. Don't get me wrong, it won't help you spotting. As proved, you know what I mean? I lost a spot in a tree, but what it will help is your back not bending down and it'll it'll get you um spotting quicker as such, like more efficient, should I say. So that's what I do. Um, yeah. Peg four is free. Oh, where's that pipe again? I don't wonder if you can see it at all. Oh, a bit bigger. Oh no, he just swam off a little bit there. It's mental that the, he's just knocking about in there. Um, yeah guys, so, three hours left for me, and I'll pack up my gear, get it in the car, and what I'll do later is I'll show you, uh, I mean I've only got a standard saloon car, but I've got this thing called a handy rack, it's basically an inflatable roof rack, you can take it, take it off when you want and roll it up and put it in your boot, and then when you, when you need it again, get it out, strap it on. Um, I'll put my uh, my barra on there and my rod and my rods and my bivy on the roof. And you know I mean, I've, I've been doing 70 on the motorway, and it ain't come off yet. <laughs> Touch wood. So, right, signing off. Check this out. Double Kadak action. Look at that. <laughs> the beans in there, and the sausages. The full fry up there. Look at that, Master Chef. Teamwork, that's called. Team effort. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, um, time now is 10 to 1. And uh, we, we're packing, well, we've packed up literally. All we've got out was our rods, and we've got the net and the landing net, and I've got a chair as well. Um, and we're near enough ready to go, aren't we, mate? Yeah, about another half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, and then we're going to have a walk around the lake, see if we can see anything. Uh, we were just talking a minute ago about peg selection, and we don't know if we've... Well, we didn't get it right, but today, if we'd come here, we would have got it right, because all morning, what, we've seen the carrot, haven't we? We've seen a shoal of four fish, we've seen another fish just swimming about, this is all within the last hour or so. Um, and, you know what I mean? We thought we were going to have one last minute, but we still haven't had one. That's why we've extended and extended and extended until mm -hmm. now, isn't it? What are you thinking? I'll, I'll say to you, I reckon we say number 24, we'd definitely have had a cat. Yeah. Because the, I think just the, there's not many people on now, and the line, you know, there's not many lines going through, is there? Yeah. So I think they've just decided we're up. A lot of people have gone home now. We're up and we're off, and the fish have moved round the other side of the lake, our lake, our side yeah. of the lake. Um, but yeah, it's just seen the carrot, little glimpse of him this morning. Oh, I right couldn't over believe Bill's, it. Right over Bill's uh, rig. The, uh, it was that one down in the, oh, hang on, where am I pointing? Uh, anyway, well, the one down in the corner there, over there, and Ash was here and he went, he's up, hang on, give me them glasses. I think that's the carrot and we had a look, didn't we? And it was. It was the carrot. We could see him. And then, soon as we, after we seen the carrot, I had a little bit more of a look round, and I just kept spotting fish. Yeah. I spotted probably about six, seven fish just in the last hour. Yeah. Um, I saw one at the back earlier, didn't I? But they're cruising, you know, sort of foot below the surface, and you know we're fishing up to 14 foot of water. So I'm thinking maybe late this evening, towards the morning, they might get their head down for the munch, and that, and unfortunately, we would have missed it by then. Yeah. You know, but well, uh, we're, we're getting used to uh, the difficulty of this lake, aren't we, at the minute? Some people may find it easy, but I'm finding it quite difficult, mainly because I've had a cut, cut, catch a cart the last two times I've been here. So to me, that that's uh, that's hard fishing for me. 
so yeah but um do you know what I mean if we uh, we've changed to the zig a couple of times well I've had the zig out a couple of times and really we oh did you hear that up the back then the crash up the back there um, we should change to the zig now but the problem is we're fishing we've seen the fish so tight to the snags and the overhanging trees uh, all over it obviously there all the way around here that with a zig we wouldn't be able to get close enough for a start and it'd probably just get tangled in the tree wouldn't it yeah. which is the problem but um, definitely coming back but yeah yeah you really got to mate you know what I mean we, I think we, that, next time we need to really hit the bailiff say what's been caught where you know and see if we can spot the pattern and, you know try and locate the shoal fish and you know just make a decision the problem was the other day was that we oh well I turned up and it was I'm trying to get a peg with a, an empty peg next to me so Ash can like uh, fish next to me and then at the same time we're having anglers turn up every half hour and every peg would be getting taken wouldn't it yeah. and it was just like oh my god what are we going to I mean, how are we going to fish that? It's literally the best peg on the day that I got here that was free was peg two. Then the bloke moved out of peg three and moved into it. So, oh, such a, so we'll have to just take our time next time, won't we? And just maybe suck it and see and say, right. Split up, split up. Yeah, yeah. But um, we've got a competition next week, which hopefully we're going to smash. Water Beach. Water Beach, mate and uh, look forward to the next blog. But until then, fish safe, don't, don't have nightmares. nightmares. <laughs>